respect and fear. Two most common words that you hear every single day. Respect and fear. So, why am I bringing this up? Well, number one, I want you to know that they're both two different things. But to some men, they're the same. To some women, they're the same. Especially men who are hungry for power. Men who are greedy. Men who are lust to the idea of a perfect world. Respect and fear both run in our blood. They're both there. We both have it, and and so does everybody else in this world. A bit of background, right? Those two, they both come from our natural desire. The desire for attention. The, The desire to be in power. The desire to be known. The desire for people to come to us in times of crisis. The desire to be needed. All of that sparked the very idea of respect and fear. So you see, respect, to put it simpler, respect is something that you gain. It's a privilege. Getting respect is a privilege. On the other hand, fear is a tool. So you have on one side respect being a privilege and you have on the other side fear being a tool. And so to any other men, to men like us, we see them as two different things. But to other men, they see it as the same thing. They're both tool for them to gain benefit from. You see, our natural desire to live, it means that we do whatever it takes for us to live. And that means us gaining the proper meal, us getting the proper sleep, the perfect place. The idea of getting all that means to serve yourself. And by serving yourself, you are neglecting others, neglecting what others have what others want and take whatever that you need whatever that you desire whatever that you want and put it as your own and so our our self need comes first and that's okay totally okay now you can go and ask religion whether or not that's sinful you can go ahead and ask logic whether or not that's reasonable it still makes sense We put ourselves first, and there's nothing wrong with that, because without ourselves, there is no other. Simply put, without us, there will be no kids, right? And so we have to survive in order for our kids to live. And so, uh, putting ourselves first is our natural desire. It's in nature. And... When we put ourselves first, usually, usually, we tend to have the tendency to want more than what we want, right? Let's say I want two, but then suddenly I want four. Once I got it, I want want five. And so it, it keeps on coming, right? We're never enough. We are never enough. We actually never are enough. And so we tend to grab a lot of things all at once grab this, do this, do that, do do all of it, all everything, like multiple hands grabbing the food. But the thing is here that you cannot have everything. You can have one, but not all. In religion, they teach you that, right? Everyone is born with something. Everybody is born with something and not nothing. In Buddhism, it is stated that everybody is born with one perfect thing. Everybody is born with one thing without the other. If you're beautiful, you can't be smart. It's simply put, because you are given 
one particular thing for you to live. If you're smart, you are not beautiful. If you're rich, you're not this. If you're poor, you're not that. All of that allows you to live. You have one thing for you to live, right? And you have to make the most of it, that thing. And we have to accept that we can have one, but not all. The road to perfection is nothing but an idea. It's not real. It's like a utopia. It's not real. It can never be real. An image of a perfect world is literal chaos. Do you see the paradox there? It's, it's impossible. Nothing is perfect. And so we strive for perfection. That is normal. That is reasonable. But to become perfection itself, it's not a question of normality, but a question of possibility. Because you can't be, po- you can't be sure that you are perfect yourself. Even down to the most smallest of creation, still not perfect. And to say that we are perfect is unreasonable and it's illogical. And as we evolve, right? As we evolve through time, we we become more intelligent. Right? Our race becomes more intelligent and we tend to serve people's need, people's want. We do this for that. Do this in their name, blah, blah, blah. All of that. But at the end of the day, everybody is for themselves. Right? That is true. When a situation comes, when the chaos arrives, everybody is for themselves. Because everybody is important. And once everybody is important, right, the sanctity of life there doesn't exist. You don't get to choose who's important. Everybody is important. And once everybody is important, everybody is for themselves. It's pretty much it. The sanctity of life was created by us. We get to choose who live and who die. Which, to us, sounds fair, but to the other races, not really. And once we, you know, once we understood and grasped that idea, we have two types that comes out of that evolution. Leaders and people that who are lead by leaders. And another type that descend from those two types are exiles. <clears throat> so let me take a grasp there. Leaders, right? They're the top of the food chain. People who are lead by leaders, are led by leaders, they come in second. They're like sheep. Leaders are shepherds. And exiles or wolves. They don't care. Right? They don't care about the majority. All they care about is themselves. The leader, however, cares about the majority. While the people that are being led by, they care about both. The majority and the minority. And so, the people being, that are being led by often come down the road of becoming a sheep because they care about the collective the collective motive and as a leader we do care about the collective motive but we choose who to care and who to not care because because we can't do it all The truth is, we can't do it all. You know, our hunger for power has divided us. 
our craving to control, for control, and all of that push us aside. It divides us, it makes us enemies, <clears throat> turns us one another, and in the light of day, right, in the light of day, people who do things for other don't expect anything to come back those are men in power because they're literally they are literally giving themselves up so that you can live <clears throat> and even even if you don't see that you still have to acknowledge it that what they do is far beyond what you can do because to give up your life for somebody else is a matter of great sacrifice. And that right there deserves respect. And like I said before, respect is a matter of privilege. You receiving respect is like you receiving a medal of honor. You should never take it for granted. And respect is not objective it is not subjective everybody can have their own respect and everybody can give your own respect to somebody else but fear however is objective fear is an object it is a tool you can use fear to manipulate someone else and you can use fear to control someone else because fear starts from here but respect starts from outside you gain respect you don't gain fear you already have fear in order to gain respect you have to give up your fear like I said it, 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 it's like bravery is doing something that you're scared that is bravery Discipline means doing something that you hate. You do it every day. You see, in order, like I said before in previous podcasts, in order to gain something, you must lose something. That goes around in life. To gain respect, you must give up your fear. And respect gives you a lot of things. But you should never take the things and put it for the use of bad things right I'm making this very simple because since respect is earned you should never use it for other for any other things aside from the better good of mankind because once you gain once you gain respect you gain a deeper access into society itself you get to be in places you don't want to be and you get to know people sometimes you don't even want to know and that's what respect gets you but you should never go out looking for respect because you should understand that respect is given you don't beg for it you don't ask for it it is given to you but fear itself it's already inside you so don't go looking for it The thing here is that you're not supposed to go out chasing butterflies. Build your garden. If I can leave you with something today, is to build your own garden. Build it. Cherish it. Take care of it. Protect it. And you'll see how many butterflies will come and visit you.